Okay. Uh, Hi, everyone. Uh, we are so sorry that we are a little bit late. Uh, today we are together with Gil Raviv. Gil is uh, Microsoft MEP and also a director at Avanat. Uh, today's topic uh, is again Power Query. He's going to talk about the common pitfalls about the uh, while using the Power Query. Uh, Gil, thank you for joining us today. It's our pleasure and privilege to have you with us. I'm handing over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I can also try to share my video. Hopefully you will see me as well. Um, so really glad to be here today with you guys. Uh, my name is Gil Raviv. Uh, I am a Microsoft MVP specializing in Power BI and Power Query. Uh, was part of the Power BI Excel team five years ago, developing Power BI components into Excel 2016. And today I work uh, in, uh, in a global partnership of Microsoft called Avanad, uh, helping uh, in large global scale uh, on in Power BI deployments. It's part of a global center of excellence of the company. Uh, today, today I'm going to talk with you about uh, the pitfalls of Power Query. Uh, the assumption is that you know you know the tool, you are using Power Query already to do data transformations. I will show you what it takes to get to the next level. Okay, so uh, I'm not sharing any decks. I, I kind of prefer just hands on and show you things on the reel. I think it will be much more uh, engaging this way and, and interesting for you. Um, if you have any questions before we start, you are welcome to send it on the Q&A. Um, and we will start in a second. Okay, so before before we start the session today, I just wanted to share with you a few links that will help you moving forward to get a, a better deep dive about the pitfalls of of a, a Power Query. So the first, the first thing that I wanted to share with you is on my, on my blog datachant.com. If you will start the, the search for pitfalls. Okay, let's do the search for a second. Okay, let me copy paste also this link to, to the chat so you will have it. Um, I'm doing it probably in the announcement. So this is the pitfalls series in my blog. Okay, you are you are you are welcome to use this link. There are uh, pretty much multiple multiple articles about the relevant pitfalls that that uh, uh, we have in Power Query, and you can see here the actual the original series. Uh, and list 10 pitfalls for you to watch over and cover. And we will go through some of them, the main ones today in this session. Uh, in addition to, to these articles, you are welcome uh, to consider uh, having my book. Uh, it's a Microsoft Press book with Pearson about Power Query. Uh, this book is packed with more than 200 uh, exercise files around around the data transformation and challenges in in bringing data into analysis, and we will use content from this book today as part of the exercise. The good news for you, even for today, if you want to keep working together with me, you can go uh, to this uh, to this link. Let me just share it with you here as well. So this is my book. You can also find it on Amazon, but in Microsoft Press Store, you can download the actual sample content. So if you will go to sample content, sorry, to downloads tab, and click here on the download section, you are going to have a, a, a zip file with plenty of files. 
So just to show you, I already downloaded the zip file into uh, my C data folder, and I have those those files here. So you see, we have chapter one, two, three till chapter fourteen, and we'll go through some of the pitfalls today, mainly the ones in chapter ten. So. Before we are, let, let's before we deep dive and explain like why we have those pitfalls and what are those serious pitfalls and why you should be well. Let's let's do it in a live way in a demo. Okay, make sense. So I'm I'm taking you uh, from one of the earlier chapter. There is uh, if you go to uh, after you download this file, if you go to uh, chapter three. We have here a zip file. Actually, it's not the zip file. Sorry, guys. It's this file. Chapter three, exercise four. Let me just open this Excel file and I'll show you the data and we'll do an exercise with this data to introduce you to the challenges that we have with Power Query. So here what you can see is we have uh, this is a, a adventure works data. So a sample database that Microsoft provides. I took this database, loaded into Excel in a typical business format. So here you can see we have all the products that were released in the year 2015. And here in tab 2016, we have all the products from the year 2016, different products. And here, here in 2017, we have all the products, the product catalog from 2017. Now, this is a very, very common uh, situation. Now, uh, in, in some of your cases, if you work with enterprise data, this data is already stored in a database and not in this format. Uh, but still, even if you are working with databases, you may find out in a database that you'll have separate three, three uh, uh, tables with each one of these products. Perhaps you are using, your company is using some kind of snapshots you know, of the data warehouse. So you may find, it's very typical to find in uh, when you build BI solution, even to the enterprise, not self-service, you'll find situations where you have the same type of data all over the place in multiple storages, multiple data sets, multiple tables. So this is very common. And of course, it's very common also in the enterprise to work with Excel files, even though you are in the enterprise and you have your own data warehouse. In many cases, the data warehouse doesn't meet your business needs and you end up working also with Excel. So what we are going to do after you see this, this adventure, adventure works product catalog, let me close this Excel file and I'll open my Power BI desktop. And let's, let's work with Power BI desktop to bring this data together. And I start doing that in the way that I see many users are doing that. Uh, so not, not the right way. So I'm clicking here on the uh, transform data. Uh, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. We have, of course, the get data. So clicking get data and we have Excel. And now I will go to my C data folder and chapter three. And then chapter three, exercise four, year per worksheet. I'm selecting the file that I showed you earlier. And now what, what typically business users, Power BI developers that don't understand the, the nuances and are not aware of the pitfalls, they will just select one, two, three, right? And transform data. By the way, some business users are not even aware of Power Query as the ETL magic tool that you have inside Power BI, and they will just click load. Of course, when they will do that, you see we have column one, column two, column three, the, the data will not work for them, right? So it's really even, even a bad thing to do. They may be lucky and their data will be in a better format and they will start working with it. But again, the opportunity to clean up the data, to prepare it in the right, uh, in the right structure for Power BI, which is a star schema in the data model typically, 
they don't know anything about like the opportunity that they have just because of the load button here. In our case, uh, let's keep click transform data because we know, assuming that our average Power BI user is aware of the tool. So now you can see I have here the 2015. Let me just move it here. Just one second. So we have here 2015, 2016 and 2017. Uh, both, both of these three files require one of the most common transformations, which is available here, use first row as headers, right? I'm moving up the first row. Let's do it on all the three. Okay. And now, now we are ready to the next level. So now the first kind of pitfall that you, that you may see, by the way, and I, I need to kind of like, let me revert back a bit my, my uh, environment because I'm doing things. I want to show you some of the things here uh, by the default settings. So I'm restoring in the defaults and I'm going also make sure that, okay, we are good. So basically this is, this is the, the basic experience for users and then they will do something very bad. They will click close and apply and they will have here three tables, 2015, 2016, 2017. And now to build the analysis, they will either analyze each one of these files separately or they will start building some complex DAX measures to sum up relevant columns from each one of the tables to, to show some data that is more meaningful. Of course, this is very bad, right? It's it's clear. I'm sure that it's clear to you also. That Gil, just, just a quick interrupt, interrupt for, for that. Uh, someone is someone asking is about, about uh, the uh, sequence size, size resolution. resolution. Uh, can you please decrease your resolution so people can see small text easier? Okay, let, let me just one second uh, try to fix this one. Okay. Let me know. I'm sorry, guy, for that. Let me know if this one will be better. Is this one better now? Uh, yes, I, I think so. Just it is not uh, 16 to 9, but it's okay, I think. Yeah, I can wait a bit to let to get the feedback on this one. Is it good? Yes, I think it's good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Sorry, guys. Uh, so, so here we have the situation where we have those three files, three tables. We know already that it's not the right way to to handle them. And of course, you know, imagine what would happen now if if. Uh, more more tabs will be added, right? We have 2017, but we are expecting to have 2018, 2019, 2020 inside. So like all this manual work of bringing each one of the new tabs into the report is, is not very maintainable, okay? What we typically see in this case, in this situation, we see typically where users will just start going to a pen query Pen query is new. And now they will bring they will bring all the type all the tables together. Okay, we can we can change the order here, but it's it's pointless, it doesn't matter. You append all the tables together, and now you have another, let's call this one products. So they will have the new table called products, and you can see here also in the filters. In the filters, you, you you actually cannot see that now, but right, the, you you even you are losing the context of of the ear. We lost the ear context. Here we know the product ear by the data, but here we don't know it anymore. We lost the context of the ear, and they will click close and apply, and now they will have in addition to those three tables, they will have products. So the next thing that you would know, right? Another kind of a pitfall 
is that they they don't really know that you can actually disable the load. Everything, let me just show you, you we have the query dependencies that can give you a good, a good uh, understanding of the dependencies in your table. And you know here we did the append of products. So 2015, 16 and 17 are not needed anymore in the model. They are just an interim kind of like ETL pipeline that was needed to build products. We can we can remove them from the model. And this is another thing that is part of the pitfalls. Many users are not aware of the fact that they can go to the Power Query editor and disable disable the load of all the interim tables in the in the in, in, in Power Query. So now by the by disabling these elements, you can see again in the query dependencies. Now you see load load disabled is is labeled for the three interim tables. And now when I will go to Power Query and do a refresh, I will only have the products. Okay, so the model size is better. I don't need to confuse my users about tables that are not needed, and that's a better way to move forward. Now, what I would like to show you, even after you do this, this is a very non-scalable approach. It will not work for you very well in an enterprise context, because imagine what happened now if I will just go to the Excel file. Okay, let me just open the Excel file for a second. And imagine now what would happen if I will take 2017. OK, and you see my Excel here. I'm taking 2017 and I'm going now to duplicate it. OK, let's duplicate it and call this one 2018. So now, as you know, uh, if I will go, let me close this one. Now, you know, when I will go to Excel, to Power BI, and click Refresh, 2018 is not shown up, right? I need now to repeat the process of taking 2018, duplicate, tw taking 2017, duplicate it, call it 2018, and go here under the navigation to change to change the navigation into 2018. Okay, and now promote this. I have this 2018. I can make sure it's it's not enabled. And I need now to go to products. And in, for products, I will need now to bring 2018 manually. Click OK. And then I will have 2018. And that, this is not scalable, right? It's imagine that it will happen Imagine that you are managing 10 to 20 reports for your organization and they are repeating changes all the time. All this maintenance is not going to make you a happy person. Uh, you, you would like to be able to build a report that given some changes that you know that you predict that are going to happen, you will be able to support the, the report. The report will be refreshable. Uh, you know, we are using Power BI desktop here, but we are publishing it also to the service. In PowerBI.com, you want to set the schedule refresh to work. So it doesn't make sense that all these things will break. So basically, the, the, the first family of pitfalls happen when you build a solution that is not robust enough to changes, that the refresh may fail or miss data. Okay, so now, and you know, this is very serious because imagine now some users will think perhaps when they see the products that, that this, this report is already automatically can acknowledge products from, from later years. So because we, we lost the context, we don't know what is the release here. I cannot even as a business user or, or a tester, a QA tester, I cannot even know that perhaps I'm missing data from 2019 or 2020. I may assume that this report is working, but, but perhaps we, 
we even forgot that this there is kind of a maintenance here that is needed to to make sure that the report will keep refreshing new 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 tabs. Okay, so now let's move to another interesting element with the same data set. I am opening the Excel again. Let's imagine that you also have a re retention data retention policy per apps. And now let's let me just duplicate again. Uh, I'm going to duplicate 2015 to the end, and I will call this one 2019. Let's say we have new data from 2019, new products that were del delivered, and due to some retention policy, we are not allowed to to store 2016. So I'm going to delete 2016. Okay, now let's save this file and see what happens. So now back, back to the report, I will click refresh, and you see that I have an error, immediate error, because the tab of 2015 is missing. Okay, so this, this solution is not scalable, it doesn't work anymore. Uh, and, and typically the pitfall here is that a Power BI developer will follow the user interface, without real realization that by some fine tuning, they can have a much more robust solution. Okay, so now let's let's quickly show you through uh, what 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 we can do to fix this specific specific situation. Okay, so the starting point is you may say, and it's not the best one, but the starting point is you can, for example, start keeping the context of each table by adding a custom column for the year. So if I will go to add column and create custom column, and here I will call this one release year, and this will be 2015. Okay, now, uh, sorry, this 2015 doesn't, doesn't, I forgot, we don't have, <laughs> let me, so here we are going to change the source into You see, this is even doesn't even allow me to do some settings here. So again, ve very challenging to work on 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 such queries. Uh, one of the first pitfalls that I name in my article and book is the actually formula bar. I did it in purpose, but this is a very important thing that you need to do. Go to the view tab. Always make sure you only need to do it once. Go to the view tab and enable formula bar if you never did it, uh, because the formula bar allow you to better understand uh, the nuances of, of the code that you are doing. And I'm not asking you to learn the syntax at this stage. If you know already the syntax, then that's perfect. But even if you don't know the syntax, just by looking in this code, and I see an error of 2015, it's very easy for me to realize, yeah, I need to remove this part to fix this query to work, okay? And so th these are the things that, that, that you can actually do. Um, here for some reason, uh, we don't have even 2016 working, not sure why. Let me see, I will delete 2015. And now in products, uh, 2016 is not working. That's really interesting. Okay, so let, let, let's just uh, get away from the bad one, show you very briefly the, the good way to do it, and then we'll move to some other pitfalls. If you have any questions before I start, let me, let me know. It's a good time to ask some questions. Anyone? No question, not yet. question yet. Okay. So I actually I'll delete, let, let's delete all these tables and start from the beginning. So I'm going to new source Excel. I'm selecting the ear per worksheet file. Now after we change it, we have we move the bit the ears, but it's the same. So now the first thing is instead of selecting, right? If in the UI you you're doing something that you, you can guess that it will create some static references to these table names, but the names of these tables will change in the future, then this is not a good thing to do altogether. 
Instead, I need somehow to load the entire workbook. It can be also the same with databases. You, are, you will have a database and then several tables, and you don't want to load them explicitly because perhaps in your solution, the table names may change. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to select the, the main folder. Now, you don't have here the disabled OK button, but just to show you the trick, right clicking here, there is a transform data option. Again, I, I selected the folder, I did right click and click transform data. So now if you are familiar with loading data uh, from folders in Power BI, you get a kind of the same experience. You, 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 you have here the list of all the tabs in Excel, right? So what I can do now, I can select the first column and the sec second column, remove all the other columns from the table, I don't need them. And now all I need to do, you see here in the data, we actually have all the relevant entities that we need. So all I can do now is click here on the expand and select all these columns. Okay, so now you can see we have we have all the tables. We, we do have the challenge of column one, column two that we need to address, but we have all the data that we need across all the different years. Okay, so now what we are going to do next is to make sure that we have the right format. And you can see the first row has actually the header names. So I can go now here and use the use first row as headers. So I have name, product, color, everything looks okay. But you can see if I will scroll down, I will have here in, in row 137, I have the name, product, na number, color, etc. that are not, that are the headers of the next file. So in order to fix that, I can now go select, select name, unfilter the name. Very important when you are working with filters to check the formula that it correspond to the selection and, and, and you'll see you'll see an examples of why this is this is very important later on. And now so now we don't have any more the headers in the middle. We we remove because we don't have in this column we we are not assuming to have a product called name. We are only assuming to have the headers with this name, so we are just filtering it out. Now the next thing that you would do, and this is a, a pitfall, very, very problematic pitfall. You'll typically, you see the 2017, you will typically double click here and change this one to release here. Okay, by doing so, you see here in the code, this is actually hard coded now. 2017 is hard coded. Meaning that if I will now again, I will let's change this this query to products. And while this this uh, this specific uh, table is ready for us, and I can close and apply, and I will have all the products in the right way, everything is perfect. But the problem is that if I will go go again to to our file. Okay, I lost the context here, just a second. So if I will go again to this workbook and the first tab is no longer going to be 2017, I can even just move it. Let's just move it. Uh, how did it move? Let's move it here. I just even move the tab. Okay, now if I will save this file and we'll go back to the report, and click refresh, we will get an error that 2017 is missing. And again, even if we did everything, everything good, we forgot one very, very uh, important element, which is during the renaming, remember, here we got 2017 up, 
because of the promotion of the corner of the first row. But here we really need somehow to take this element, the 2017 element, and change it to something that will help us to go through, to rename 2017 into release here. In other words, I need the function that will check what is the first column name. And to do that, let me just uh, open in something. Uh, let me see if I have zoom it. I had zoom it and I think I lost it. So never mind for now. Let me just take so a notepad. And so basically what we need, we need to take 2017 and somehow go to our table and fetch this number. The way to do that is first of all to understand what is the table name. You can see here in the code, let me just also copy this element here. Okay, that's so that's this is our just a second. This is our actual actual function, right? You, you can see here, and this is something sometimes tricky to understand. This is the name of the table. So in this step, when we did the rename, we did the rename of filter draws. To show you why I know that is that you can see also here on the applied steps, filter draws is the previous step. And because Power Query works kind of in a, like a pipeline of transformation from A to B to C to Z, etc., filter draw was the previous step. So during the name column, this is the actual name of the previous table that we need. So now what we need to do is to find a way to refer to this table, ask this table, what is the first column name that you have? For us, luckily we have a function in Power Query M called table.columnNames. If I will use this function, on this specific table, okay. What I'm going to have, let me let me just try it on our data. Okay. So I'm just creating here another step, just for for presentation. Uh, I will do it here before I will move it before the rename. Now you can see if I if I'm going to paste table dot column names on filter draws, I get back a list. So this is the this is the list of all the columns and you can see we have here 20, 2018 as the first element. Uh, meaning right this is so this is actually we have here another interesting case. I already I already uh, let me just fix this one. Uh, in the 2018, this this should be now to fix. Let me show you just one second. So now, if you want just to manually fix our our query, not in a smart way, you can now just change the first name. It's called 2018, so I can do that now, and and this one will work. Just to show you, let me take this one out for a second. So. Now you see the name 2018 work, but again, because we know that the first tab can change a lot, we, we cannot out code it 2018 now, because tomorrow we may have a completely different tab name. So we want just to be able to ask in a dynamic way, what is the first column name? So here you saw how we return the list. Now I would like to show you how we can, we can find the first column in the list. So there are two ways to do that. The first way is in list items to refer to a specific entity, you can use the, the curly brackets. So in our case, if I will use curly brackets with zero, I'm going to take the first item in the list. It is zero, zero based index. So zero is the first item, one is the second item, two is the third item, etc. So this way, we can get the first item. Another way to do the same thing is to use the list, the list functions. So if I will take list dot first 
And now I will copy paste this entire section. I will get the same the same result. I am here accessing this list and I'm asking for the first item. OK, so you can use both. In, in my case, this one is uh, like shorter, so let me just keep this one. So I'm copying this expression here and I'm going back to my query. And instead of 2018, I'm going to paste the expression, this expression. OK, so now you can see. So this is the actual expression. Let me just put it a bit a bit in a compact manner and I'm clicking enter and you can see nothing bad happened like the same thing happened for us and this was working for us automatically getting the the first value the first the, the first column name that we have and it works to prove you that this one is working I can go back again to my folder open the excel change 2018 uh, let's move now 2018 and move it to the end. So now we have 2019, right? I'll save it. I'll go to Power BI again. I'll click refresh and you see no error. Okay, so now 2019 is here and we are, we are able, in the previous step, we had 2019 in the, in the column name and in the renaming, we change it to release here in a dynamic way. OK, so what I want to conclude here is the main pitfall that you have that is related to refresh errors come because of the way that Power Query is detecting your user interactions in the ribbon, in the transformations, statically refer to column names, which sometimes is not needed. In, in our case, we had an, an example where the column name was dynamically changing. So in order to fix that, we need to apply a dynamic approach to address column names. So remember, table column names is one of your best friends. If you will go through many of the pitfalls that I'm talking about, this is going to be one of the most important functions that you would need to use because most of the pitfalls are breaking of refresh when column names changes. OK. Any questions before we move to the next one? So uh, if not, let's continue. So just to conclude this section, you have a very robust solution let me just click the advanced editor to show you. This is a very robust solution. I'll, I'll put it also on the notepad. So this specific function, this specific expression in, in Power Query, I'm showing you now the entire M code that was generated, is relatively, is relatively much more robust because we are not referring to the current names per se. I could, I could say to some extent there is, there is another very intrinsic challenge that we have here. And as another pitfall, you can see in the, the third step, we expanded the columns. And here you can see, wh when do you know that you have a vulnerable queries? When you look in the code and you find out things double quoted, with something that is relatively specific to what happened when you did it in the UI. In our case, you see column one, column two, column three, column four, and column nine. And then it repeats itself here. So this, this specific step is dangerous because what would happen if, for example, this is actually more dangerous even than a refresh error. With a refresh error, you know that you need something to fix. But let's say, let's imagine now, just to show you, you see we have only nine columns. So and let me now show you again the Power BI itself. You see here 
in this step, we expanded this table, right? And we expanded it in a static way using those columns. Again, Power Query, when I clicked here on the expand, checked the table so that we have column one to column nine, and then he expanded it into nine columns. But if I will now go again to my, I will not do it because it will take more time, but if I will now include another tab here, and so another column here for all these, all these pages, I'm completely going to miss it. I will not see it anymore. So this is this is a problem, and it's even worse because if I will add the column here, and I will let's call it, I don't know, let's call this one a discount, and I will put here some numbers. It also means that now the product category name, which is perhaps an important element in the report, is going to get lost. We will not have it anymore, and this is very dangerous, right? Because now you may actually lose, inf lose information that is vital for your report, and you may even get situations where you don't even have errors, and the data will just be missing. Um, perhaps not in this case, but it's, it's something that can happen. So to fix it, let's go back to the table column names. And what I'm going to do now, let me copy paste this into Notepad that you will see it better. Okay. So that's that's the code. I'm going to uh, just one second. Let me remove this one and just paste paste the line. And I'm going to kind of like doing it in a way that will be a bit more uh, user friendly to you to see. Okay. So we have uh, 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 just put it a bit here in the center. Okay. So we have this function that is going as you can see it is it was created by us and it, it is going twice over column one column two till column nine one to say to say which columns to expand and then how to name what is the name for of these columns so what we can actually do is take all this into a dynamic code to do that, what we can do now is to understand that we actually, you see here in this step, we have the first object here, have all the headers that we need, right? These are the headers that we need in the, in the first row. So what we can now do, we can right click here, click, click on the, on the, on the headers new query, just for a second to see the code. You see now I have this code with zero. Zero is actually the, the, the first row that we add here. So you see, this is this table. So I'm going, I'm going to the first row of this table, which is this object. And I'm returning the, the cell, the value in cell of the data column. So again, you see here the coordinates are 2019, the first row, and the column data. So that's this table. And this is the code. This is the code that, that is needed to access this data. So all I need now is to remember this syntax to get to the actual table. Okay, I'm copying this one just because if it, it's, it's a good way for you. Again, what I did here, I, I went to the original uh, query and because for some of you that don't know remember the syntax of power query a, a very good trick is for example if now you need to access the table i'm right clicking on the canvas and i'm using the drill down and drill down as new query to help me now to learn the syntax of how i can access this cell the, the, this is the way that i did it so Remember, drill down or drill down as a new query are a great way to find the syntax that you need to, to, to access uh, a specific cell. Okay, so now if I will go, I, again, I will copy this. This is the syntax that I need, curly bracket with zero, and then to access the data column. 
And if I will go back to my notepad here, now what you can see is I am going to write here. So I need here a way to return all the other names of our table. So, so basically we are going to use the remove other column. This is the table name, right? That was the table name. We will access the first row in that table and we will access the column data. This will return for us a table object. This is the table of the first tab in the Excel. And now all we need to do is use table.column names on this specific element. This will return a list of column one, column two, column three, column four. So let me just copy this element here and paste it here and take this one as well and paste it here. Okay, and now you see this is a dynamic, a dynamic implementation. I can now copy this function, go back to Power Query, go to my products, and in the expanded data, this is the expanded data, I'm going to replace with this one, okay? So now, if you want, depending on your preferences, you can keep it back to be a single line or keep it multiple line. It will work the same, it doesn't really matter. But now you see a click enter, nothing happened, which is a good thing. It means that the expand was working again. So from here, we do the expand here and it just worked for us. Okay, so now we can remove the data, drill, drill down that I did. And we have the product. And this is actually a very resilient, a very resilient query that is not going to fail when tab names are going to change. Any questions? Now I want, we have 10 more minutes. I want to show you one of the. There is one question regarding yeah. operation. operation. Regarding what, sorry? Ampivot, ampivoting operation. Okay. It's not related with uh, your example, but question is asking about uh, handling multiple level column headers. Do you have any example uh, or recommended document? Yeah, uh, I have. I have. The user I have, is ex asking yeah. about that. Yeah, I, so I have many examples, and if you will go uh, through my book, you will actually find out. You will find out uh, we have uh, two chapters just on unpivoting and, and uh, unpivoting of relatively uh, complex scenarios of nested tables. Um, I can do it now, by the way, but it's not a part of the pitfall. So uh, if you want like kind of like voting, if you want us to keep, just to flip. Uh, I, I think you can go with your uh, regular flow. Uh, if you can just share uh, this content with users in chat, that should be enough. Yeah, sure. So just to show you, let me open my browser. If you will go, so first of all, in the download section, you can find real examples without reading the book. And specifically, you see I'm going through the, 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 the table of contents. Uh, you will find the relevant uh, examples and exercises in chapter six. Unpivoting tables. Let me again show you. And a bit scrolling, a bit zooming up. So, table uh, uh, chapter six, unpivoting tables, uh, showing you examples of of unpivoting uh, two by two level of hierarchies. So it's not just one one column. You have you have two levels, both on the columns and in the rows. And Perfect. you have it, you have another even more advanced section in chapter seven, where you have a dynamic n by m level of hierarchies. So it can be three, four, five, no matter how many hierarchies you have in columns and in rows. This is uh, giving you a very advanced solution to approach 
any, any level of hierarchies, including creating a custom function that will handle it for many different tables. Okay. Uh, I will be glad to have a full a full session in the future if you invite me, just on unpivoting in advanced scenarios. The, this is one of the coolest coolest capabilities in Power Query. I definitely agree with that. It's it's wonderful tool. We can have a, another session only for that topic. We will yeah. be more than happy. <laughs> yeah, just let me know when, and that that will be my honor, guys. So the last thing that I wanted to show you, like we have how much? Six minutes? I, I'll, I'll type like in three minutes even. In in chapter in chapter ten, one of the examples that I wanted to show you, I think. Uh, let me see. This is the data. So here we have here we have uh, another file. Why isn't it opening? Uh, for some reason, it doesn't open. Let me try again. So, here in this raw data, you see now we have uh, it's not an adventure walk, uh, it's a wide world importers. Okay, and in more specifically, we are going to imagine now that we need to do some analysis for a specific city. Okay, so now if I will go open my Power BI report again, let me close the Excel quickly. And what is the Excel? Closing Excel, opening Power BI, getting data, Excel, going to chapter 10 and taking the chapter 10 exercise one raw data. So now you're going to see we have here all those products. Um, actually, these are more like, uh, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter, some data. Uh, so now I'm, I'm taking this, this file. Okay, let's, let's also use first row as a though. Now I want to show you what happened, for example, when I click here on the filter on city and I'm starting uh, to go to, you see, I want to, I want to select, in, in my case, I want to select uh, all the cities that start with, let's see, with B, and we have here Beaver City. So if I will now, select Beaver City, you see that it works fine, right? Beaver Bay, we have the data in the right format, but if I will now go in City and instead just click B, let's say that I want to uh, uh, keep uh, all the cities that are starting with BE, okay? So I'm going to uh, just keep and uh, let me just one second i need to uh, there is even a change that uh, they changed the behavior since i wrote it i hope not uh, so here you see when i'm selecting those elements and click ok you see that i have here uh, all those cities that are selected with the be uh, in in my case uh, just one second. Okay, I, I remember now what we want. Imagine that we just want to exclude Beaver City. Okay, so if I will now go and search for for BE and find in this case like Beaver Bay, I, I will uncheck Beaver Bay and click OK. You see what happens here in the code? Now, some users don't have the, the M formula, right? They don't know this one will be hidden. In my case, I already know. All I wanted to do, again, all I want to do is excluding my data Beaver City. 
Beamer Bay. I click here to, to exclude it from the report, right? I click OK, and instead of a code that will tell me city is not equal to Beaver Bay, I have in the code a logic that tells me city is equal to all the things that I add in the drop down menu earlier. OK, and this is not all the data. This is only the data that has BE. You see BE. Every, every city zero have FBE somewhere in their text. But this is not all the data. And me now, for me as a basic user that doesn't look in the code here, and the formula bar may be completely closed, I, I will now build the full report. I will click close and apply. I will build a report, a new report, knowing that only Beaver Bay is out, but actually only cities with BE are in and B Beaver Bay is out. So I am not working with the entire data set that I need, and this is extremely dangerous. This is, in my mind, the highest, the highest pitfall that we have with Power Query today. So again, to avoid, avoid this situation, all you need to do is whenever you need to do filtering, you will go instead of using the search and applying this element here, it's recommended that you will go to the text filter and do does not equal, and here I can write beaver bay and click OK, does not equal, right? And now you see that I have the code that I needed. Okay, another option if you are already strong with M, and the formula bar. Another option is just yes, use use the filter, use the filter by all means. But as you use it, make sure that you are auditing the results and make sure that the logic is the correct one. So in our case, I will need to fix all this manually to be very big. Okay, by doing it manually, now I, I know that this one, this one will, should work. I'm missing a parenthesis. Okay, so that, that was the, one of the pitfalls that is most danger, dangerous, applying filters in the wrong way. Uh, in, in both in my blog, if you'll find in my blog, uh, the, the pitfall series, I'm explaining in more details why, why did it happen? What is the logic? It doesn't happen all the time, but it is a very common problem. Depending on the things that you have in the search results in the filter, uh, different logic, a negative or a positive logic will created by Power Query. So very important to check out the formula now. Yeah, and that's it. I think we, we reach our, our end of the hour. If you have any more questions, let me know. It was really a pleasure being here today with you guys. Um, looking forward to meet you again. Just call me. Okay, okay uh, uh, it, it, it will be our pleasure again to have to you have about you. Ampivot thing. It's one of the most important and most useful features in Power Query. If you don't know SQL, then it, it, it's, it's, uh, it is a lifesaver for many power users. Uh, per personally, I need to ask your opinion about that. Uh, it looks like Power Query is uh, less popular comparing to Docs. Do, do you think it is so? Uh, we see that this is the case uh, mainly on the community side. Uh, it's because Power BI is exposing Docs much more then Power Query, even the name Power Query doesn't appear in the, on the ribbon. If you would ask me, it should be the other way around. And <laughs> definitely, definitely, be, you know, because in terms of the scenarios, you are building, when you work with uh, data, cleaning it up and making it ready is a scenario that should be much more common. In many cases, you don't really to need, you don't really need to build time intelligence dashboards and build docs. It's just you need the ad hoc analysis to do something, and you can clean it up with Power Query. So if you will just count 
the, the, the likelihood of using the tools, you would expect that people will know that Power Query, they need it much more. There is a problem of awareness for sure, though the numbers are going significantly. It's a very, very popular tool. There is no other ETL tool on Earth that is so highly used than Power Query because many Excel users are using it as well. The other thing is that the Power BI community are more, more uh, driven to build Enterprise BI and they are not working full time in Excel. So you are not counting Excel into this equation, and because in Excel the name Power Query is even is even more hidden, then you don't know about those people. So the, our community are the Power BI, are the BI Pro developers, and they of course work a lot with BI, with so with DAX for time intelligence and and building their KPIs, and they already sometimes have prepared their data. From their data warehouse, right? So they don't really, they will ask IT. Like I'm, I am working with many, many projects where, like, the the developers are just used to wait a lot for others to do their ETL work before they can do their DAX. And in my mind, it's like very annoying. I prefer to come to a project and work and be agile and don't wait, don't wait a second. So Power Query is very, very effective. To allow me to own to own the story, to own the project, to own the data. Yes, on the IT side, they need to prepare the data, but I can surface issues that they don't know of. So I I do think it should be on the top, and I I am sure that it will be eventually. I totally agree with that. Even the IT guys are not fully aware of the capabilities that are available in Power Query. Uh, I've seen many customers, I will say, uh, trying to build a da data warehouse project lasting more than six months. Unbelievable. Yeah. And, and and one last question again, again from me. It's a personal question. Do you think Power Query will replace may replace the other enterprise level ETL tool, ETL uh, Microsoft ETL tools like integration service or Azure Data Factory, because I, don't, I, I, yeah. I see that potential in Power Query. Yeah, there is the potential. There are some uh, critical gaps at this stage. Like it's it's more Power Query as data flows. Power mm -hmm. Query as data flows allows you now to do to do some rapid. You can build some uh, rapid data warehouse just with Power Query technology, but but they are missing key ingredients in the automation and in the refresh scenarios that are still probably, we, we will get better and better in this area. I don't think that it will replace, but it's definitely in my mind, uh, like anything in IT that is central, centralized tend to be with bottlenecks and you end up with a solution that doesn't meet, doesn't cope with the business needs. I think that Power Query will become the low code ETL for IT. So new things that can be supported with Power Query and you are not working with uh, uh, 20 terabytes of data and it's fine to like waiting a bit because Power Query will always be slower in the processing. If the, if the waiting time is not a big deal on the, on the import and the refresh, you'll, you'll start with it. And if it's successful, you'll gradually pick and choose which projects to use the enterprise ETL with Azure Data Factory and other tools. But I think they should work in parallel. Thanks a lot. Uh, I think. Thank you very much. Kill, uh, the, questions. These were really great examples of pitfalls and really great, great scenarios. Thanks again for your time and contribution to our community. Very neat tricks. Thank you. Thank you guys and enjoy your evening. See you next time. Thanks Have a, a lot. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.